Yep, we back at it. Chuck Dizzle live and direct. Keep it at home, grown man. Got the homies. They are back. They are Mike and Keys. We're missing one person, Casey Veggies, which obviously the EP is out right now, 10 Toes Down EP. Um, how do we get to this point, man? Casey Veggies, obviously a legend. You guys are obviously legends. How do we get to this moment of you guys actually getting together and putting this body of work together? I will say, um, you know, we've had a – we've known Casey since he was like 16 years old. Wow. Yeah. Um, we've had a – you know, he's like someone that's always with us, even if he's working on his own music, we working on our music. So we never really um, put out a project together. So this year was the year that felt like it was the perfect timing is 2023. Mm -hmm. And we just on new energy. And, you know, we was like, this is the best time to put some music out with our brother. Was it more or more or less like... Um you you guys approaching him or was it him approaching you guys? I, I know you guys work a lot together and been in the studios countless a, a number of times. But was it you, the thing? The reason why I ask is because you're still busy. You know, you still got a lot of stuff that's going on. So what what pushed this to the top of like okay, let's make sure we 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 record this, make this happen. Um, I think it was just organic, man. Like. We be in the studio twenty four seven. He be in the studio. Like we got a bunch of songs. Records, yeah. Like we we always working with Casey. So, um, it was just we just both thought about putting the album out because we haven't did it in so long. Gotcha. Like ever since like life changes, that mm -hmm. was like twenty twelve. Wow. You know we wanted to bring that energy back. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know. When when you talk about um, being organic and, and and knowing somebody, is it is it more challenging when when you you know, get in the studio with people that you know. And the reason why I'm asking that is because sometimes you put those pressures, those added pressures on yourself when it's people that you know because there's an expectation of mm -hmm. what you want to bring out of you guys, you know what I'm saying, individually, collectively. Is there added pressure when it comes to that, or is it just like, man, fuck that, we already got these over here, man, let's just, nigga, put that shit out. I think it's just fun, man. Like, we we have a real relationship with Casey. He's like our little brother. Yeah. So it's so easy to work with somebody like that. Mm -hmm. Got you, know? you, got you. And you know how it is working with your little brother. You know, <laughs> sometimes sometimes he don't listen. <laughs> we yeah. be fighting. And we be arguing, <laughs> fighting. And yeah. he's like, what are y'all talking about? But, you know, it's all out of love. And we, to be honest with you, we we doing this because we we genuinely care for each other. Yeah. And we, we love Casey's music. So we just want to see what we could bring to the table, collaborate together. Ten toes down. The, the the title was. Did you have other working titles, or was that was it uh, we, obvious what it what it means? But were there other titles that you had in mind prior to this? Nah, I think to that be honest was it. With you, I think that was it. Just was it based know. off the song that you guys got. Did that lead into okay? Let's let's form something around this. Well, or? that was like one of the songs that started the energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think the ten toes down just represented our relationship with Casey yeah. and you know I know Casey's been through some things you know as an artist being signed not being signed being independent so you know he's going through some transitions in his career so I think it was just more like we've been staying down with each other mm. you know for 10 plus years mm -hmm. I heard you guys met through Scheme yeah, yeah. that's true Scheme yeah we, I thought the Scheme bro we used to have a studio with Scheme that's right. I mean, you guys were telling us the last time when you guys were here. Yeah. yeah. Scheme, um, he de Scheme was the person that introduced us to all the new L.A. artists. Right. Yep. That's facts. Um, Scheme was definitely working with everybody. And he was like, man, y'all need to work with this kid named Casey Veggies. He's in high school. He's dope. And we've been literally working with Casey ever yeah. since. Ever, ever since, yeah. That's, that's why when you think about that, too, when, when you – Somebody's in high school, right? You just like the f you, you're years ahead of your time and your peers when you're actually like like just think about it. you know the case is a legend. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, and I think people need to give him his flowers as such because he's gone through so much, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in those moments, I, I was talking to dads about this, man. In those moments, do you do you realize it's history that you're creating and that you're making, like the things that. You guys have obviously been through, you know, the things that he's been through. In those moments, do you realize, like, damn, this is some some shit? Or do you look back at it after the accomplishments, after the accolades? Like, do, or do you like have a sense of like, damn, we're on to something? I think when we when we first met him, we knew he was special. Mm -hmm. Like, as far as like him having a clothing line at age sixteen, right? Like, 
I still don't know who's doing that. <laughs> like, right, he right. really, he really did some crazy stuff as a teenager. Crazy, yeah. bro. Crazy. He said, there just thinking about it too. Like, damn, we did some some wild shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, what inspired us to work with Casey is them being younger than us. Like, they're 10 years younger than us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And them having a movement and creating stuff, like the same stuff Nipsey was doing, Casey yeah. was doing it. He had a store. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. They were doing stuff as young guys. Our, he was one of the first artists that I knew signed to Rock Nation. Crazy. You know bro. what I'm saying? Right. From LA. Yeah. For sure. And, um, I didn't even remember people wearing Puma until I seen Casey wearing it. Oh, damn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Casey was, I would say Casey probably and Meek Mill were probably the people that brought the energy of Puma back from what I remember. Damn, so you're talking about the influence and, and yeah. somebody really like coming from the ground up doing it that way. Yeah. I, and I just, I don't know why, just high school, dog. Like, you just, I remember what I was doing in high school. I was nowhere near in the thought process of right. where, I, you know, I had interest, but actually doing it it's like so you got to obviously give give them flowers for that man mm -hmm. what are the challenging things that that come with somebody working with somebody that's younger but successful in 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 their own right in their mind and what they're doing i think the challenge is the music has to match his success already mm -hmm. like he was already successful as a businessman already mm -hmm. so the music got to match that got you got you i think that was pretty much the biggest challenge for us mm -hmm. is matching the music with with him and what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I'm listening to, to to the project, I feel, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like the the energy of a victory lap, you know what I'm saying? I feel like certain, I forgot what song was it? It was a song I'm like, damn, this sounds like y'all were in that bag around that same time. Where Were you mm -hmm. working on? This yeah. or the music was it around that's, the same that's time? That's crazy you say that. Yeah, well, the, <laughs> what people don't know is Casey was with us. He has a line in one of the songs he, saying, yeah, with, with, uh, yeah, with that's true. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that, true. Yeah. So Casey was with us during the process of working on Victory Lap. Crazy. Um, we were working on a lot of different things, and people don't know, like, Casey is the one that brought Bino mm. yeah. around at that time to, you know, be a part of the energy. So Casey always knew about, like, the new, the new artist or the up, new yeah. energy or what's coming up. So we always listen to him. Damn. So were were these songs or were these like beats that you already had? Like some of the songs I'm, I'm thinking of. What's the one I'm thinking of off top right now? Um, the the sweet. Oh my god, I had it in front of me. Master. Uh, I'll, I'll keep going. But was was these were these songs like leftover beats from Victory Lap or were you guys like just songs? one of them? Just one of yeah, them. Yeah, it was just one. Just of them. one beat. Um, the Sunset Marquee. Sunset Marquee, yeah. Yeah, that was the was. song that we did that during that time. Mm -hmm. And that song is a true story. Casey actually recorded that song during COVID at the Sunset Marquee the um, Hotel. And we, you know, like, it's like someone you hang out with every day mm -hmm. and you make music together no matter what. So it was basically like, man, what are we doing with the music that we got we are together every day so we should be putting out something yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. you know what i'm saying I, we're not really a fan of holding on to music mm -hmm. you know i feel like once we make it it should be into the world i you seen know? i seen something where tyler the creator said um after you know god forbid but after he passes away he doesn't want any of his music dropped released posthumously mm -hmm. he said if I don't have the music out right now, don't release nothing after I pass. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. if it ain't I, it, because it's it's possibly I don't. He's like I don't want <laughs> I don't want no tracks put together with people that I didn't really rock with. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts about that? When you're building your legacy as Mike and Keys, you know what I'm saying, and, and you believe in not holding on to anything, but God forbid, you know something happens. What do you want your legacy to be? Do you want the music to continue to go and continue to build with with different artists, or is it like, nah, what we have in the vote, release what we already have, put that out, but nothing past that? Oh man, that's a good. I know it's. I'm sorry, <laughs> I know it's heavy, but yeah. I'm just curious because it's like it just uh, it it. I'm thinking about artistically where your vision is for your music, right? Because I'm. I mean, I'm a big fan of Jay Dilla, and a lot of his music came out after. After right, yeah, right. 
And it's still new stuff he coming out that I've now. never heard still right. to this day. Right. And it's like. And he did that because, you know, just the recognition, you know, the recognition of, you know, people knowing he's dope. So he would put that music into the world mm -hmm. for, I mean, I feel like if God gave you a talent to do something, it's supposed to be into the world. You're supposed to give it to the people. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't believe in really holding on to something that, you know, you can make, a, you know, a lot of it. That's what made the Jay Dilla thing so special is it was so much of it. Yeah. It was like, how yeah. did you do all, all this that, yeah. all this music in that much time? Even like Tupac, all them songs. Like, mm -hmm. how did you do all them songs? You in know, like we we, yeah. we was with Nipsey a lot and he didn't do a lot of songs like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I guess it's just the the artist. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because, you know, Pac is one of my favorite artists and I thought the same thing. I'm like, dude, like he had all these albums that he recorded within these, let's just say these nine months that he was with Death Row or just in, in, in that time since he got out of jail to the time that he passed, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which people don't realize it was less than a year, like, which is crazy. Crazy. Right. Yeah. Um, but if you look at hip hop now, that's kind of like. The prerequisite, like a lot of artists are creating hundreds of songs now. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Some artists might not do it. Like you said, Nip, that wasn't his style. But, you know, somebody like a Wayne is like just pumping that shit out. You know out. what I mean? Yeah. Like that's just sometimes their style and how they do it. So I don't know. It's just it's it's I guess it's based off of, you know, who's creating and, and what it is. But you're saying for Mike and Keys, hey, if we got something, put that shit out. Yeah. But I do agree with Tyler, the creator. <clears throat> about you know you know that's that his your music you mm -hmm. know so if whoever if he's not there then he can't say who can be a part of because once you're not there then you can make pretty much anybody a part of it and so you know people always ask us all the time about the nipsey music but we're like man it's kind of like we got to treat it as, as if nipsey was here yeah. right, the yeah, same sure. way so Mm -hmm. If he, if however he felt, that's how we would do it. So he's not here. So we would be like, there's no. I, it would be better off, I guess you could say, it leaving it how it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are, What are your thoughts on uh, AI? Like where where music is going now? This is crazy. I I, <laughs> I heard a Biggie record that wasn't Biggie. It sounded just like Biggie. But it was it wasn't big. We've heard we've seen the Drake the yeah. the uh, the weekend. weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there, there's some great. It's just it, to me, it's it's getting wild. But yeah. that's where technology is going. What, what are you guys' thoughts on that? It's I, it's dope. I got a question though. Mm -hmm. Like, as far as like you saying they, it's pretty much deep faking a voice, mm -hmm. right? So legally, how is that gonna work? It's wild, wild west right now. I, don't, I think they're they're trying to figure these things out right now. But in the meantime, it's like these, some of these songs are out. Like I, I literally heard when they dropped the the Drake and Lil Wayne, not Drake, Lil Wayne, Drake in the weekend one. Mm -hmm. They were playing that shit in the clubs. In the club, yeah. What? Yeah. Oh no, they that had song. To, the, that, the label had to stop it or something. Or, but at this point, you still can't stop people from playing it at the clubs. Yeah, you can't play. Yeah, you can't. So play. who's getting paid for that if it ain't really Drake or the Weeknd? I think what the labels are trying to do is trying to make it so that you know they get a cut. They they I think they're trying to figure it out right now. Yeah. But it's literally wild, wild west right now. That's crazy. I, I love I love the idea of being able to create and you know the artistic side of it, but it's like. If I'm just somebody in my room and I can create a Kendrick song, you know, what the fuck does that what mean? Or, it, or yeah. if I can make a Nipsey that, song, like, that's scary. Right, that's, that's scary. Yes, man. So it's like, at that point, do you embrace technology and say, man, this is where we're going. Let's see how we can kind of get in where we fit in. Or it's like, man, nah, let's all hands off deck, man. Let's stop this shit from where it's going out, going on. It's like, you ain't going to be able to control that. That's just, it's just, it's already a wildfire. It's happening. At this point. So it's like, you just gotta, I look at it like being a part of the internet when the internet came into the world and all the people that were late to the internet. Because you don't want to sound like an party. old head either. Yeah. You don't right, want to be yeah. late to, to the party of yeah. where the world is going. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not, I don't look at it as bad, but is it scary a little bit? It's, tr uh, it's very tricky because uh, it's going to put a lot of people out of jobs. Yeah. 
you know? Yeah, that's that's true right there. But there's some human things that you just can't duplicate. Like, right. uh, uh, it's, you know, you can't duplicate real feeling of music. Of course not. I seen Travis, I just uh, read Travis Scott said, I'm, you know, he used the NPC for his album because he said it feels, you know, it's, it's analog and it feels mm -hmm. the most realist and authentic. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I always believe in that. Like you can't duplicate something that's real. And that's even if you do it like on a computer, you can't duplicate what a real bass player can do right. doing yeah. on the computer. It's just no, not the same do thing. It doesn't feel the same. You can tell. Right. But I think where, where, where it gets tricky is that... You can trick people. You can trick people, right? You can trick people. Like, I, you know, a lot of people don't know the difference between what records sound like on rec records, mm -hmm. on cassette, and then on CD. Like, over years, it... it, 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 it being compressed differently. Yeah. Real music heads, they know. They can tell, oh, man, all this has. Yeah. But I think as we go on now, like, less and less people really know the difference. Even, hell, I do, you know, the live and direct shit every, um, every, every week. I'm having people send records in, and majority of people don't even have their songs mixed or mastered, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they think that shit is flat. Hey, yeah, that's cool. I don't, I don't need to do that because, you know, people are playing today. They rock with them like, Bruh. I don't even know there's a reason why it's called mixing and mastering. Bruh. Mixing is to make it sound good. Mastering is to make sure it doesn't um, distort. So That's what bars. pretty much the basic one-on-one science of mastering is. When you play it anywhere, it shouldn't never um, distort. Mm -hmm. Right. What, what advice, what other advice would you give upcoming producers now and I feel I, I I feel like this is a recurring question you all I, you always gotta ask because somebody's watching this and they see the success of Mike and Keys and they're like damn I wanna I wanna do that I wanna work with legendary artists I wanna be legendary I wanna have these moments what do you tell somebody that's starting off right now trying to figure it out would you tell them to go the route of um, getting all the proper equipment. What would you say, man? Figure out the get the feeling of it first, like the second part you said. Get the feeling of it first. No matter what the equipment is, yeah, yeah, because it it, yeah. it don't matter what you use. It's all in here, all yeah. in here. Got it. And I think the best advice I would give anybody is if you could be around someone that knows what they're doing, that's gonna really make you mm -hmm. really good. If you practice, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it's like being around someone that you don't know what you're doing, but you watch them doing it. Eventually, you will get better at it. I would advise any up and coming producer to, you know, be under a producer or even if it's just having being around. Mm -hmm. I would do that. I would advise that because that's going to either make you great or you're not going to want it. Do you, do you have any tips for, for writer's block? And you guys were talking about on this project how the chemistry is there. It's being organic, you know, just letting things flow. When things don't get to that moment, I don't know if you've had a moment within this recording process or just in general, what do you do to kind of get over that hump? Like like he said, you just got to be around people that are that are pretty much better than you. Got it. That'll yeah. inspire you. Like being yeah. around dope musicians, like people that really know how to jam and yeah. play, listening to Dope records, like old school records, though, like Roy Ears or, Damn. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That right. stuff will inspire you. That's yeah. why, that's why I get samples so much, because yeah, yeah, it's inspiring, yeah. Yeah. you know? So, yeah, just and do that. AI can't create, recreate that type of stuff. What if it can, though? You know, and if it <laughs> I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like you just, if we open up chat GBT right now, <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a command to say, man, get a Roy Ayers sounding sample chop it up like this and then you have a song that's the no for sure but that the thing is it's like human error and computer error are two different things you know what i'm saying that one that computer can stop always remember that <laughs> right. when that electricity go out you can't have that <laughs> what about the cloud my nigga huh we got the cloud shit's in the cloud yeah, I, I mean, don't know. I, I feel. I feel like we're, I, I hear you. 
I mean, I, we in the Matrix. We in, I'm hey, not fighting it. We, we in the Matrix. <laughs> it sounds like you trying to push back. Like, <laughs> now nah, hey, we, we in the Matrix is just, you know. It, it's, look, look, is, it, is, is that discouraging as artists, as producers now kind of seeing where it's going? Or is this like, nah, I'm, I'm still okay because, or we're still okay because we know what we bring to the table. I have no fear that I'm, I'm cool. It's just something that passes by. Or is it something that really worries you? I don't, th- I don't think it's discouraging because you got you got to get with the times because mm-hmm. yeah. these these young cats is really doing their thing. Yeah, and they're not complaining; they're no. just they're doing moving it. fast. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So, um, I but but also I feel like when you're a real musician, you don't have to worry about that got type it. of stuff. Got it. Got it. Because you know the ins and outs and everything. Mm-hmm. When is a song complete? Uh, like so when, when do you know something is actually finished because you you reference going back to certain songs right or going back to certain music that you've created and amplifying and making it better sometimes you'll sit on a song for a couple of years and like okay now is the time to get on it but when do you know like okay it's time this it's it's actually done now oh. and this can go for the EP too like when did you guys know like okay now nah, five was enough we good versus having like 10 or 15 joints on there hmm I think when 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 you know when the music is done, it's like it just feels good. It just you're like this is complete, mm-hmm. and you can tell when it's not complete. When you start trying to overwork a song, mm-hmm. that means it's not complete. Usually, a majority of the time, a good song you do it complete right away. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I think it's just you. I was just, DJ Quick always told us if it feels good, it's right. Damn. So that's really kind of how we, <laughs> you know, we try not to be technical with music. Mm-hmm. We try to go by, you know, like back in the day, a lot of the songs might have been nine minutes. The intro might have been three minutes before the song came Max. in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't no format. It just felt good. So it's like, that's kind of how we approach it, Got it that way. Got it. Um, I didn't get a chance to really dive into this, but I, I'm, I'm interested on Formula One, man. Talk about. That man, because I I seen that on on, on the uh, the radar as well. I know we talking about ten toes down, but y'all you know dropped that as well mm-hmm. prior to this. So talk about what what Formula One is all about. Uh, we did that with DJ House Shoe. Shout out to him, man. He he pretty much curated the music that we did. Nice. Mm-hmm. So we gave him a bunch of beats, but he put it all together. Word. So it actually surprised us that it came together like that, and it was just like cohesive like that. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's kind of fly. How you can just be like. Nah, you got it. Go ahead. Handle your business. You can trust somebody like a house shoes to, to, to make yeah. that decision. Because, you know, as, as artists, sometimes you might get on like, nah, let me kind of control this. Let me just be, be you know, touch everything. I'm, I'm on this. What, what made you say, you know what, if it was it because it was house shoes? Man, he, it, you, that and one day he came to the studio and he blasted our face with unreleased Jay Dilla. You know, he was, you know, he was very close with Dilla. So yeah. you, he. He sparked us, and he was like, you guys want to be inspired? And once he did that, then he was like, I just want to pull up to the crib one day and just let me go through the beats and just let me do my thing. And we just like, yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Same thing what he would do with Jay Dilla, go through samples, go through beats. This sounds dope, all this. So it was like, we needed that energy. And, like, you know, we had a lot of things in um, common you know, Jay Dilla being close to him dying and then being close to us dying. So he was like, I kind of felt y'all energy. Mm. And, you know, it was it was dope to have someone take some beats that, like how we were saying, and not hold on to him. He was like, what are you guys doing? Like, right. we're going to put this music out. And that was our first vinyl that we ever had. Shit. We got our first vinyl. And we did an in store at a vinyl store, and that was our. We never did nothing like wow. that, and I see people buy our vinyls from just instrumentals with no words it was super dope. So I think what's dope about that is you guys being willing to take risks, right? And having success, you know, working with the people that you've worked with, but being able to say, you know what, man, let's not hold on to this. Let it let it rock and let it do what it's gonna do. Again, going back to the feeling, ChatGPT mm-hmm. can't do that shit, right? Mm-hmm. So I get it. So it's it's it's, it's more of a, a, a tip of my hat to you guys for doing that because you can get to the point where you're like, nah, nah, I want to be in control. Let's mm-hmm. just make sure it has to look right. And I think that's inspiring for for other people, not just producers, but just artists alike, to let 
the music do its thing and have, other, like you said, have other people around right. that may be able to do, have a vision that you don't necessarily see. Because mm-hmm. prior to this, them beats was just sitting there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. 100%. And that actually inspire, inspired us to put out more music, putting out an instrumental album with Mars, yeah. Three Ninjas, anything that we can do that we feel like if we can make more music, then we, we're we not holding on to it no more. God, I love that, man. I love that. At this point, what's what what's moving forward? What, what, what's, I know you still, you know, promote the project, but what are you looking forward to before the year ends? Like, what's, what's on that mark at this point? Just to keep putting out music like how we've been doing. More collaborations? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of collaborations with different artists. Um, I think our our probably our new style we're going to be doing is just putting out EPs. Um, a collective of EPs with different artists, people that we like. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it might be a jazz album. It might be an R&B. Like, it might be... Um, a prog rock you know we're inspired by all type of music so we want people to see like what you know what we do sample that right there by the way that little whatever that was (laughs) (laughs) sample that little (laughs) 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 mike and keys want to (laughs) beat um so on that same note of inspiration would you be open to doing let's say country or just something that's outside of the box of of the norm that you would would normally do I are you are you on, on in terms of like challenging yourself is that something like yeah i'll fuck with that or it's like nah i want to stick away from that we we ain't scared to at least try it right, you yeah. know what i mean i mean it's just it's just music you know i think when you look at music there's there ain't there is no stipulation on like what who you can create with and what mm-hmm. you can do if it sounds dope it's dope, it's dope right you know mm-hmm. i don't know i mean i know when we was in houston with manny fresh he played us some dope country songs they was doing. So we was like, oh, oh. we can do this. Mm-hmm. So you just never know. Eyes is open to it. Yeah. Um, without giving away too too much information, let's I'll, I'll save I'll save the um who you are, because I already know you probably got something tucked away, right? Mm-hmm. People that you're working with, mm-hmm. other e- EPs, right? Is there somebody that you would love to do an EP with that you don't have a relationship with? But you just want to put out there, man. I would love to do an EP with this person. Um, I don't know. I've I've been listening to a lot of Larry June lately, man. Mm. And he be on our live yeah. check, checking us out. Like, like June. I would want to do an EP with June for Y'all sure. Y'all don't have a relationship with him? Yeah, we have a relationship oh, okay. with him. It's just, you know, it's everybody, you know, it's Doing like music is really a timing thing. Right. Like, and we and we understand that part. Like, you know, Break that down, dude. Break that down, please. Okay, the timing thing is like, hey, you know, he might have had some stuff planned out. And, you know, we might see some, we might, he might be in Paris and we might be in Paris and we might see each other. And then we might build the relationships. But it's hard when we all got a lot of stuff going on at one time mm-hmm. and to get together. Because really to make good music, we got to be working kind of together. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Or at least building. You know what together, I'm saying? Right. So I think that that's the 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 patience part is just the ti- the timing part is knowing that it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Was that something that you always knew? Is that something you had to kind of build and understand over time? Because I I could I'm a just I'm the type of person I'll get in my feelings over some shit. Right? I'm better now, but prior <laughs> to this, like you know, I'd, I'd be into my feelings for people canceling interviews sometimes. I, I, yeah. I, I've i learned to understand now, like, okay, yo, people got other schedules, things happen, like, it's not that deep. But mm-hmm. it took me time to get to that place. Mm-hmm. And as you're describing this, it's like more of like a level of understanding. Was it always like that? Or did you, was it something that you had to kind of like get to a place where you're at? Yeah, we had to work on that. Um <laughs> Because it, it's tough, you know, like you said, you don't know people's situation. And then it's just like the same thing working with an artist. You could be working with artists and they might have had a bad day that day. Mm-hmm. And you like, man, they don't like my beats. They probably did like your, like the music, but they just wasn't in tune that day. Mm-hmm. So you can't take, we've learned you can never take it personal because it's creating music is an energy and a vibe. Yeah. So if the energy and vibe ain't there, then you can't expect to get results. So we've learned, like you said, 
man or even someone being late or anything like you just don't know people's situations and energy you gotta at least give them a chance first gotcha. before you just you know so if you had to put i guess i don't know we okay the idea of how many how many eps do you think you can actually drop before the year ends i think we can do at least 15 at least 15 <laughs> eps <laughs> yes Y'all got that much shit in the can? Yeah. We do. We do we have got a lot, a lot of music the in the can. No, I'm talking about like. With not different just, artists. Yeah, yeah, with different artists. Yeah. 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 Oh, this is about to get real interesting. Yeah, because we spent like a whole year just creating music for our I love our, that. our personal album. So mm-hmm. we did it didn't go the way we wanted to. So we just kind of like, we still just stepped creating music like all right we ain't gonna stop just because it's not how we wanted it to be gotcha Mm -hmm. so we created a lot of songs with new artists um um uh, legendary artists all type like a mix of pretty much everything pretty much everything that we like all right you said larry june i don't think i heard you say somebody um for me it would probably be I definitely wanted to be a singer. Okay. Um, you don't have one currently with the singer now? Out of the 15 y'all got? Yeah. Oh, yeah, do. we do. Okay, so you like Ali Upin. Okay, I see what we're doing. <laughs> that's the next announcement. That's, um, that's the next announcement then. Okay. <laughs> Mike, yeah. you've, you've done this before, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at my nigga be a media train. Um, I love this. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Somebody that you that you don't have an EP with as of right now. Well, I would love to do an EP with Tame Impala. Okay, wow. you know what I'm saying. I think that would be dope. Okay, so for for people that are watching right now, because this is something I always want to like, I want to uplift this side of it, right? Who's somebody that you you're checking out in terms of new music? Mm-hmm. Right, who do you think that people need to be aware of right now, whether you're working with them or not? Just like man, the city or whoever the world needs to know about this particular artist. That people don't. That people may they don't. may not know about. I mean, they they may or they may not. Um, from the top of my head, I'm thinking about. I don't even know if you heard of him. His name is Cartoons. Cartoons. I haven't heard him. That dude is crazy. Cartoons. Though. Yeah. Where you from? I'm not sure, but I think he resides in New York. But okay. he be posting like, uh, is it like, those, the the cartoon? Well, not cartoonish, but is it? Never mind. I'll let you continue. Go ahead. Yeah, on his Instagram, he be posting like music, like how like he's making it from scratch. Oh, okay. So he's going viral off that. Word. Okay. And uh, I think DJ Jazzy Jeff had did like a uh, like a Twitch thing and was DJing his music. Oh damn! So people cartoon. know about him, but. He's he's really crazy. Or where this cartoon? What about you, Mike? What you think? Mm. I like this kid named Laren Wong. From uh, he's from the from Bay the Area. Bay. Or, he's dope. Okay. Yeah. I'm doing because I after this I'm I'm. I'm nah, go, Laren, go, go, Laren Wong is dope. Check him out. Mm. I feel like I've heard that name. Yeah, we you know it's just for us when when we go in. Find music is we just try to organically find it like if we was looking for a sample yeah or a record so um we stumbled upon his music he's a new artist um and he's dope gotcha before i let you go do you guys have the same mount rushmore of producers or are they different like i'm just trying to get a sense of like if your styles are different or you know what's your thing is so crazy it like fluctuates, yeah, man. It's so just because so let's just like let's, let's let's do three three producers. Like any genre, like you got to be specific. Like any genre, I'm gonna just stick with hip hop. Let's just stick with oh, hip hop. Hip hop, stick okay. with hip hop, right? right? Three producers, <laughs> three producers. That's on. I, I know Mount Re- the the Rushmore is four, but we gonna do three. Top three for you. Top three for you. Uh, Keys. Dr. Dre. Mm-hmm. Timberland. Okay. Jay Dilla. Mike. It's Dr. Dre. Mm-hmm. 
Jay Dilla, and this is going to, uh, I'm going to have to say transition here, but I'm going to have to say Boy Wonder. Okay. All right. I just, yeah. just, I just, I want. I mean, you got two. Because I, I, I kind of, we got to mix it up, you know. I, I <laughs> but, but, no, but but would it have been the same three? Yeah, it probably would have okay. been the same three. But you just want to switch. I it just up. want, yeah, because I'm just thinking of like new. Got you. You know, like they've been. No, I'm just, I'm just wondering because, well, there's no reason, no rhyme or reason behind it. I just want to see if you guys are on the same level in terms of like people that you look at as in terms of top and inspiration, right? Somebody can you, you might have a completely different list than he might have. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it might that might be the synergy that you guys have in terms of producing. You know what I'm saying? That's what you bring to the table versus what you bring to the table. So it's nothing. Just 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 a just a top of the head question I had. Is there anything you want the people to know uh, that we haven't already talked about that you feel like is worth mentioning right now? Aside from support the project, Ten Toes Down EP, Casey Veggies. Um, we got a label. New label we started with Mars called MMK Records. Nice. And we just going to be putting out a lot of music, like I said before. <laughs> uh, you know, we've we got a 14-year tw- uh, relationship with Mars since we've been in the music industry. And he's been one of the people that when you know, when you say who you look, um, you got to be better than people. You got to be around people that's better than you in the room. Yeah, he was one of to, those people. Yeah, he's one of those people for that sure. you know <laughs> inspired us to be great. So, um, we're just that's the number one thing we're working on right now is um, uh, building this label. Yeah, um, love that for y'all, man. I, I want to continue to see you guys win, man. I, I always appreciate y'all pulling up on on, on the call. Drop of a dime, man. Appreciate y'all as always. always. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we'll keep on building, man. And and look forward to these 15 goddamn EPs that y'all oh, yeah. got. Yeah. We're dropping the music. That's All for right. sure. We'll put in the work. There it is, man. Mike and Keys, Chuck Dizzle, keeping it homegrown, live and direct. We'll catch y'all next time.